Let's talk hair loss on GLP-1s. Are you on Ozempic or Manjaro and noticing that your hair may be thinner or falling out more? Well, here's the truth. You didn't do anything wrong and this isn't permanent. By the end of this video, you're going to understand exactly why GLP-1 medications can cause hair loss, why supplements like biotin and collagen don't usually help, and most importantly, the proven steps to stop it and get your hair growing again. Now let's get this part out of the way first. It's not the medication itself that causes hair loss. It's the rapid changes your body goes through while on these medications. And it's gotten so bad that the FDA has now recognized this as an official side effect, which means it's real, it's common, and it's worth understanding. Listen, not only am I a physician who's treated hundreds of patients on GLP-1s, but I've also lived this transformation myself, losing over 150 pounds on GLP-1s so far. So if you're someone who wants evidence-based, no BS information about GLP-1s and peptides, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. But now, let's get started. In the Surmount 1 and Surmount 2 trials for trisepatide, aka Zepbound, about 7.1% of women and 0.5% of men reported hair loss. This is now explicitly listed in the FDA prescribed information. And more importantly, it notes that hair loss was associated with weight reduction, not the medication itself. So this isn't unique to GLP-1s. It's something we've actually seen for a long time in the medical community, you know, with patients on bariatric surgery and crash dieting. The mechanism, something called telogen effluvium or TE. And to understand what causes it, you need to first understand the hair growth cycle. Your hair isn't just sitting there growing. It's constantly cycling through three main phases. There is the antigen phase or the growth phase, which lasts two to six years. And this is where about 90% of your hair normally lives. Then there's the catagen phase or the transition phase. It's a short one to two weeks when growth slows and the follicle detaches from the blood supply. Then there's the telogen phase or the resting and shedding phase. This lasts two to three months before the hair falls out and the cycle restarts. When you start losing weight rapidly, whether from GLP-1s, bariatric surgery, or even severe illness like sepsis, your body perceives this as a major physiologic stressor. It shifts resources away from non-essential processes like hair growth and toward maintaining glucose balance, vital organ perfusion, and immune stability. That stress signal pushes a large percentage of the antigen hairs, which are in the growth phase, into the premature telogen phase all at once. Two to three months later, you notice diffuse shedding, clumps of hair in the shower drain or hair on the pillow. This is telogen effluvium. The good news, it's temporary and we can reduce it dramatically. Number one, slow your rate of loss. If you're dropping more than 1.5 to two pounds per week, your body is under stress and you're losing weight way too quickly. Stabilize your GLP-1 dose. Slower steady loss equals less shock on the body. I always recommend my patients titrate their dose to steady weight loss anywhere from one to two pounds a week. Number two, optimize your protein intake. Clinical studies have shown that you should aim for 1.2 to 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight during calorie restriction to preserve lean muscle mass and prevent hair loss. I personally have most of my patients aim for a minimum of 120 to 140 grams of protein per day. For me, I found it's easier to have them set at a certain number instead of trying to calculate it themselves and throw themselves off track. The third thing is check your labs. Vitamin deficiencies and hormone imbalances are commonly associated with hair loss as well. So I always make sure that my patients rule this out first because this is much easier to treat. It's reversible, right? So ask your doctor to at least check your ferritin and iron levels check your thyroid function by measuring your H level, and check other vitamin deficiencies that could be associated with hair loss, like vitamin D, vitamin B12, and your zinc levels. Fixing these early can prevent chronic shedding. Number four are more hair-specific interventions. Now, I usually don't recommend these unless the hair loss is severe or it doesn't respond to the previous strategies because these are medications and they do have side effects. So please speak with your medical provider before starting these. The most common is topical oral minoxidil, which has been shown to shorten telogen effluvium Duration. Actually, more and more dermatologists recommend low dose oral minoxidil for resistant causes of telogen effluvium. Minoxidil helps extend the antigen phase or the growth phase of the hair cycle, allowing for longer periods of hair growth. However, when you first start it, you may notice a period of hair shedding, which can seem severe, but don't be alarmed. That's normal and should pass within a month or two. Now let's talk about why hair supplements like collagen or biotin don't really help when it comes to telogen effluvium. These supplements promote healthy hair growth, but only if the hair is still in the antigen or growth phase. Once the hair has detached from the follicle and is in the catagen or telogen phase, these supplements won't make a single bit of a difference. Listen, I know this can be scary, but this is not permanent damage. Telogen effluvium typically peaks around three months after the trigger or stressor and resolves within six to nine months once the balance returns. In my own clinical experience, once patients stabilize their weight loss or correct any sort of underlying deficiencies and optimize their protein intake, regrowth 
quickly begins, honestly. So don't abandon your GLP-1 journey. Support your body throughout this transition because this is about metabolic adaptation, not medication toxicity. So if this helped you understand what's happening, please give this video a thumbs up. You know, I keep reading all of the panic posts on the internet, especially on Reddit. But honestly, if you support your body throughout this journey and you work with a medical provider and at least keep your labs in check and you know what's going on within your body, you'll be able to tackle this and prevent this from happening. So I'll see you next time.